Hello, welcome to the ENT video in a very windy Middlesbrough for the unveiling of Temenos, the Anish Kapoor and Cecil Barman sculpture by the Riverside Stadium. In a world where you know, most of the objects we look at are objects we, we somehow know how to describe, there are some, namely works of art, that are hard to describe. when I realised quite how ambitious the whole thing was, um, I called Cecil. We just just worked on Marcius at the Tate together, and um, um, asked Cecil if he'd come and kind of collaborate on this thing, and we both sort of <laughs> held our heads and said, oh no. But the, the, the process has has literally been a, a question of toing and froing of of ideas between us. I've made a whole um, um, series of these sort of attenuated forms. The first one was um, in Newcastle, um, Gateshead, um, at the Baltic, um, and then you know we've we've worked together on various kinds of language. I mean, the poetic of structure is make is art. But then when you're making a building, so in a, in a way when you make an art piece, you're, you are free to make the pure poetic of the structure. And then you've got a 16-story building going into space with nothing below it and cranking 100 meters, yeah. you know. I mean, it's like, what? You know? So that's tougher, but then we pulled it off there again. I, I, I think we found a way to see the form and the structure, and you're never aware that's its structure. You're reading a form with its patterns. And for me, that, that's it. That's what I want. I mean, that, with the process of visualization, testing, and then comes, I would say, another four months of precise drawing work and, uh, you know, calculations, analysis with my great team at Arup, of course. I have to make tribute to the whole team. Uh, and so the whole process, I suppose, is eight months. I dedicate the work to art always. You know, it's a, it's a kind of poetic... I would say more than art even, it's a poetry that I'm always looking for in form, shape and structural elements that make it so you transcend the, the discipline, otherwise you remain as an engineering artifact, when, which, is, which is fine, like the bridge we're on or something, it's functional purpose, but it, to move into a public domain of appreciation, whether as the mayor said today, for people to feel happy, joyous, whatever, yes. that's yeah. what yeah, you know, you have to do. Because yeah, I mean, if you go back to engineering in Britain, British engineering at its source was, you know, absolutely creative. I mean, well, look at Roman engineering, mm. the viaducts, yeah. Viaduct, yeah. fabulous, yeah. you know, the part of the, the Pantheon. Mm. For 1,800 years, the biggest arch, nobody had broken that record. And that was an engineering feat that became architecture. So, you know, they're, they're wedded, this separation between architecture, art, and engineering, I've never subscribed to. It's a landscape of big objects, and uh, we wanted to you know, work with the language that's there. The language, of course, is a language of engineering, mm. of, of utilitarian objects. Uh, Cecil and I are both interested in you know, the nuts and bolts of how things put together and uh, um, how one can um, fashion that putting together carefully enough so that when you look at it, that's not what you really look at. Mm. So even though it starts with the the, the, the bits and pieces, the nitty-gritty, that's not eventually what it's after. Mm. So I hope what we leave behind is a kind of ethereal, a very big but ethereal object um, that doesn't immediately reveal itself. But, you know, where you yeah. kind of have to walk through it uh, um, and ponder the, 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 the changing geometries, right. yeah. which, you know, which slowly reveal themselves. I suppose one of, the, one of the biggest issues is the, uh, the overall tolerances involved uh, in a structure such as, the, such as this. Um, you know, we have to get the, the positions of the foundations to within a very tight tolerances um, because there isn't that much um, uh, movement within the structure that's allowable during the construction phase. Um, all of the, uh, the cables and the structural steelwork, that's all fabricated off site. So when that arrives on site and gets put together, it, you know, it, it basically has to fit exactly where we've got the foundations and the connection points. So achieving tight tolerances over you know, that's those sort of distances 
Um, that's probably one of the one of the, the biggest issues that we have. So it's Anish Kapoor has obviously his vision coupled with Cecil's structural design. That information is handed to us and then we have to realise that and get that uh, into the ground. I find engineering is completely misunderstood by the general public. And so I've tried in my way to make it visible and different and uh, I write and publish books to make that journey, make it accessible to the general public that it is as artful as art, it is as you know, wonderful as any kind of creative process. I always believe that, you know, structure has a deep poetic in it. And finding that poetic is what I've dedicated 20 years for. I just keep trying to get it.